This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, uh, as I said at the end of the previous lecture, I'm going to work through a past exam question, Fluff Taught, uh, where it is um, a reconstruction. And as I said, it's not really a question of learning any rules. It's a combination of reading the question carefully, and there is a lot to read here, and pretty basic financial accounts knowledge. So I'll go through this as an example, and I will upload some more worked questions on reconstructions in the Revision Kit Live section. However, let's have a read. I hope you've downloaded the question and had a look at it and a read through yourself first. If you haven't downloaded it and read it, then do. Uh, and then come back to this lecture. Uh, but always look at the requirements first. Um, it may not mean much, but at least it'll help us when we come to read through the uh, body of the question. Part A, uh, A1, prepare a projected statement of financial position at 30th of June 2016 on the assumption that Gupta exercises its rights and the shares are repurchased. We'll find out precisely what's meant by that um, in a minute. Uh, part two, the same again, statement of financial position at June 2016, but this time on the assumption that the proposed refinancing takes place. Again, we'll check what that means when we come to it. And finally, A part three, projected statements of profit or loss for June 2017 and June 2018. So uh, that's slightly different, uh, fairly obviously. Now uh, part B, evaluate whether the scheme is likely to be agreed. Well, we can discuss by that after. We rather need an answer to part A to be able to um, discuss it properly. Now let's read the body of the question. We know what it is we need to find out, basically. <laughs> You know, what are, are these shares being repaid? What is the refinancing? So let's read through. Five years ago, the Patels invested in a new business, manufacturing furniture. Some of the members became directors, others had not been actively involved. A venture capital firm, Gupta, they also made a 20% investment. A representative was appointed to the board and they took out a long-term bank loan. Sales have been disappointing. As a result, members of the Patel family have been reluctant to invest further. Um, Gupta has taken a tougher attitude and pressured them to pay a dividend of two million for the year ended 2015. And they've said if things don't improve, they might exercise their right to compel Fluff Tort to buy back its shares at par. So that's what part A1 meant. He wants us to do a projected statement of financial position if they exercise the rights and we do repurchase the shares. Um, however, the most recent product, back to the question, has had a much bigger success than expected. And in order to produce enough shares to uh, affect the results, they'll need to make sufficient expenditure on manufacturing facilities and additional working capital. Uh, which presumably means they'll need to raise more money if they want to um, capitalise on this new product. Uh, we give them a profit and loss for um, 30th of June and the forecast, sorry, 2015, and the forecast for 2016. And note the bit below, the forecast statement of profit or loss for the year 2016 is not affected by the proposed investment. This will only affect after 2016. And importantly, the figure for retained earnings in 2016 can be assumed to be the net increase in cash. Uh, we've given a summarised statement of financial position at June 2015. 
It looks fairly normal. And over the page, there are two sets of notes. The first set of notes, it tells us how the shares are owned by the Patel family, and who are directors, and 25% by the other members, and 20% owned by Gupta. Well, we already knew that. Uh, the bank loan is secured on non-current assets. It's due for repayment in 2019. Uh, there's a covenant uh, that the equity to non-current liabilities should be greater than 1.3. So what that means is, and it's, I think that's going to be relevant for our discussion later, uh, if we break the covenant, and if that ratio is not greater than 1.3, then the bank loan people could demand the money back. Uh, there's also an overdraft facility available up to 5 million. Uh, the loan notes held by Rajiv Patel. It's unsecured and subordinated to the bank loan. All that means is if we do fail and have to repay the borrowings, um, the bank loan gets repaid first. Patel is subordinate. He only gets repaid if there's anything left after repaying the bank loan. Uh, if no finance is available for investment in manufacturing facilities, non-current assets, current assets within cash, the bank loan, the loan note, the current liabilities can be assumed to be the same at June 2016 as at June 2015. There's details following the second set of notes are about the proposed financing, refinancing, but for A part one, that's irrelevant. A part one is not refinancing. It's wanting a statement of financial position at June 2016 on the assumption Gupta shares are repurchased. Well, let's get on with it. We've got uh, 2015s. So you've got your layout here. And assets, first of all, well, non-current assets. Uh, that first note four on the second page says, if no funds available, non-current assets are the same. So they'll stay at 69. Uh, it also says current assets excluding cash stay the same. So they'll stay at 18. Cash, well, I'll leave the cash for the moment, check what's happened after, but let's move to the other bit, equity and liabilities. Uh, share capital, uh, currently it's 50. Well, all that's going to be happening in 2016 under A part one is Gupta's shares will be repaid. Gupta owns 20%, 20 percent, 20 percent of 50 is 10, so all that will be left is the remaining 80 percent, 40. Uh, retained earnings. At 2015 they were 2.6, but the statement of profit or loss, the forecast for 2016, shows retained earnings another 2.4. So if another 2.4 is retained, retained earnings go up to 5. So the equity will be 45. Uh, what about long-term liabilities? The bank loan, uh, no change. Still there, it's not repayable until 2019 or something, so 30. Uh, the loan note to Patel, no change at five. Uh, the current liabilities, uh, well again, uh, note four at the top of the second page, they can be assumed to be the same, so they'll stay at seven. And so what does all that add up to? Uh, 45, 42, 87. All that remains is to sort out the cash. 
uh, the cash at the end of 2015 was 7.6. The note under the statements of profit or loss says it uh, can be assumed that the figure for retained earnings in 2016 can be assumed to be the net increase in cash. So the cash will go up by 2.4. However, we've repaid Gupta's shares. They were 10 million. The cash goes down by 10. So the cash ends up at zero. And the total, does it balance? 87. 87 it does. So although it's, obviously it takes a while to read the question, and obviously it takes me longer when I'm talking, uh, but otherwise I don't think that's too bad uh, for those four marks. All right, that was A1. A2, though, wants the same again. Same to financial position for year ended June 2016. But this time on the assumption the proposed refinancing and investment takes place. And so now let's look at the details of the proposed refinancing, the section just above requirements. There was no point in reading it earlier, it wasn't relevant to A1. But for A2, let's run down. The members of the Patel family who are directors they're going to subscribe to an additional 15 million one pound shares at par. Two, Gupta will subscribe to an additional 20 million one pound shares at par, one dollar shares, sorry. Three, the 8.5% the bank loan will be renegotiated and increased to 65 million uh, to be repaid June 2022 uh, and it'll be at 10% a year. Four, Rajiv Patel's loan note will be replaced by five million one dollar shares. Five, because of the refinancing, will increase non-current assets to 125 million, current assets to 42 million, and current liabilities will go up to 12 million. And finally, there's mention of operating profits, but they're not until 2017 and 2018. So for the moment, they're not relevant to the statement of 2016. So let's go off as we did before. And half of this is so easy, it's untrue. Assets. And non-current assets. Note 5 said they'll increase to 125 million. Easy. Uh, current assets excluding cash. Again, note five, immediately above requirements. Current assets other than cash will increase to 42 million. Easy. Cash. Well, right before I'll leave it, sort that out later because various things are happening. Equity and liabilities, share capital. Well, it was 50. However, no one of the refinancing members of the, of the Patel family will subscribe to an additional 50 million dollar shares at par. Note two, Gupta an additional 20 million dollar shares at par. And what else? Note four, uh, Rajiv Patel's loan note will be replaced by five million dollar shares. So share capital will end up 50, 65, 85. Share capital will be 90. Uh, retained earnings? Well, just as in A part one, at the end of 2015, they were 2.6. There was extra retained, the forecast of 2016, another 2.4. Retained earnings will go up to five. Uh, the long-term liabilities, the bank loan, 
Uh, well, it was 30 million, but note three of the refinancing, it'll be renegotiated and increased to 65 million. It'll be 10%. Uh, Rajiv Patel's loan note. Ah, well, that disappears. He was owed five million, but if you remember, he was given shares instead. Um, so the total non-current liabilities is 65. Um, the current liabilities, where was it? Ah, note five of the refinancing. Current liabilities will increase to 12 million. So the total liabilities 77 and therefore uh, the total equity and liabilities 95 plus 77 uh, 172. All that remains is the cash. Uh, the examiners stuck it in as a, a missing figure and found it. Why not? Doesn't matter where the figure came from. I will check it though for the time it takes, just to make sense of it. The cash at the end of 2015 was 7.6. Just like before, it will go up by 2016's retained earnings of 2.4. It'll also go up though because of these new shares that were issued. No one, members of the Patel family subscribe to an additional 15 million. It's a par. Uh, Gupta, they subscribe to another 20 million. Uh, Rajiv Patel got shares as well, but that simply replaced his loan, so he didn't actually pay in any cash. What else? Oh, the loan. Not the loan, sorry, the, yes, the bank loan, not Rajiv Patel's loan. The bank loan, it was refinanced, uh, 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 it was increased to 65 million. So it was 30 million. If it's increased to 65, we've got another 35 million from the bank. Where's all that money gone? Uh, well, non-current assets, first of all. No five, they went up to 125 million. 2015, they were only 69 million. So 56 has gone to increase non-current assets. Current assets, they go to 42. They were only 18. So they've gone up by 24. So less cash. Uh, finally, though, current liabilities, they were seven, they've gone up to 12. Well, that gives us five more cash. And so what cash balance do we end up with? 7.6 plus 2.4, 15, 20, 35, minus 56, 24 plus 5. I get cash of five. Uh, what's it add up to? One, seven, two. And yes, it balances. All right, let's move on to note three. A three, rather. Prepare forecasted or projected statements of profit or loss for the years ended June 2017 uh, and 2018. Well, again, you've got your layout uh, as part of the question where it had 2015, 2016. Uh, and note six of the refinancing tells us what to do. The first of all, the operating profit It'll increase to 20 million in the year ended 2017 and 25 million 
you know, second year, year ending 2018. So that's easy. Uh, what about the finance cost? Well, remember, if the tails loan has been repaid, the bank loan, it was increased to 65 million, and the cost of the loan, 10% a year. So 10% of 65 million, six and a half million. That leaves a profit before tax of 13.5 and 18.5. Uh, tax, the very last line before required says it remains at 20%. So 20% of 13.5 is 2.7, I think. And 20% of 18.5, 3.7. Uh, leaving profit after tax, 10.8, 14.5. Uh, what about dividends? I think it said somewhere they're not going to pay dividends. Yes, there's no dividends will be paid for these two years in note six. And so there is the retained profit. So again, I'm sorry, but apart from obviously the time it takes to read, there's a lot there, two pages of information. Apart from that, that's a very easy four marks. All right, that is only half the marks, so Without me taking too long, let's discuss part B. Uh, the examiner's written loads and loads and loads, but there's always much more than um, you would expect, or he would expect in the exam. Uh, but the things you must stress to get most, if not all, of the marks, something that's been a completely irrelevant so far uh, was... The note two at the top of the second page, it mentioned a covenant. That the loan from the bank is subject to a covenant that the ratio of equity to non-current liabilities should be greater than 1.3 on a book value basis. So how's the bank going to react? I'm not going to waste time writing this all out neatly, but in, no, um, in A1, uh, where we had to repay um, uh, Gupta, the ratio of the equity, what was it precisely? The equity to non-current liabilities, equity 45, non-current liabilities 35, Uh, 1.29. Uh, so um, it would be breaking the covenant. Now, all right, only slightly. So the bank may uh, accept it, but strictly they could demand that the loan was repaid. Uh, what happens if we have the refinancing? That was here. Uh, the equity 95, um, the non current liability is 65, so the ratio uh, 1.46. So there, there'd be no problem. I mean, it's assuming the bank does agree to this refinancing, the renegotiation. Uh, but if they do, then the covenant then presents no problem. So that's one thing you must stress. That's definitely worth a couple of marks. Um, another thing to look at is the shareholdings. Because that's going to affect, obviously, three parties. Um, the members of the Patel family who are currently directors. The members of the Patel family who aren't directors and go to VC. Uh, now, how's the shareholding split? <coughs> uh, 
Uh, currently, it's in the very first paragraph, I think, or the first two paragraphs. Uh, Gupta, currently, own 20%. Uh, 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 where is it? Sorry. Oh, sorry, it's no one on the second page, the first note one. 55% um, by directors, so a member of the Patels, uh, and 25% by other Patels. So that's how they currently hold. Uh, what will happen if we have the refinancing? Uh, well, with the refinancing, I'm going to have to look at the numbers of shares here, uh, because, where is it? It's up here somewhere. The share capital after the refinancing is 90. So I'll do percentages after. Uh, who owns them? Uh, again, back to um, the refinancing bit. Uh, uh, members of the Patel family of directors subscribe to an additional 15 million shares. So currently, members of directors own 55% of the shares, and the shares are currently are 50. So 55% of 50 is 27.5. They're subscribing to another 15 million. I think I've got it right. So their shares will go up to 42.5 million. Uh, Gupta, Gupta subscribing to another 20 million shares. So at the moment, they have 20% of 50, they have 10. They subscribe to another 20, that brings them up to 30. Uh, the other members of the Patel family, well, they did own 25%, uh, which of 50 was 12 and a half, and it'll still be 12 and a half. They don't subscribe anymore. Uh, but finally, remember, whoever it was, somebody Patel, who uh, had the loan note, uh, he got given 5 million shares to replace the loan note. So in percentage terms, what are the holdings? 30 out of 90, 33 and a third percent. Um, directors, 42 and a half out of 90, 47.2%. Uh, Other Patels, 12 and a half out of 90. 13.9%. Uh, and finally, this was, I better put the name in, was it, yes, it was Rajiv Patel. He now owns 5 out of 90, which is 5.6%. Now, why is all that relevant? Well, you can comment about each of them. In that, well, directors, for a start, the directors currently uh, control, they own more than half the shares, 55%. Uh, they've now lost control, they only own 47.2. Now as to whether that would upset them or not, we can't say, but it's certainly a factor that we need to mention. Uh, having said that, the Patel family as a whole did own 80%. Well, they still do have control of the family as a whole. Uh, Gupta, of course, all right, they have a bigger holding. Uh, it's a question of you know, how certain they are, how sure they are that this refinancing the reinvestment will be beneficial. Uh, it's also worth mentioning, nearly there, sorry I'm talking a lot, but it's worth mentioning Rajiv Patel. Uh, at the moment, he's got a loan of five million. Now, all right, it is subordinated. 
But, you know, if they refinance, if the company does well, and if it was still a loan, then at least you'd be getting this steady income of whatever it was. 9% was it? Yes, 9%. In future, he'll be getting dividends. So, of course, he may end up a lot better off. He may end up worse off. We can't really say, but again, you didn't need to think about how we feel about it. Uh, and finally, the bank. Uh, in some ways, the bank will be very happy. They're getting higher interest. They're getting 10% interest instead of 8.5%. Um, and, of course, their loan is secured on the non-current assets. So hopefully they'll be happy about all of this. Uh, but again, the more they're lending, clearly there is a risk to them. So, I said I'm not writing out his answer, and do read it. But they're the key points you should have mentioned. You have to mention the covenant, and he was staring at you. It's completely irrelevant in part A. Uh, and the fact the shadows in change, and well, to talk about each of the individuals involved. So, sorry that was uh, a long lecture. I hope that was useful to some degree.